So this presentation is more about measures of center. We have three measures of center so far, the mean, the median, and the mode. And uh, this is gonna compare those three measures of center with respect to a particular characteristic or quality of statistics uh, called robustness. And I'm gonna illustrate with an example of what the robustness of a statistic means and then compare the three different measures of center to see which one is more robust. It's generally good to be robust, but that's not the only consideration in deciding which statistic to use. So here's an example. Uh, we want to find the center of the distribution of the income of City College students. So the population being studied here is the set of all CCSF students. Each individual belonging to that population is a student. And the variable that we're going to measure for each student is the adjusted gross income for tax year 2019. Now there are a lot of City College students. It would not be practical to find out the income of every CCSF student. It would take a long time to call them all and they're not going to want to answer. Okay. So this is the kind of situation where statistics can sometimes be useful. Maybe we can get a sample of students, not everybody in the college. And if it's a representative sample, meaning that it's like the population, it doesn't have too many individuals of any particular income group or of any other group, then if it's representative of the population, the sample can tell you something about everybody, even though you don't have access to everybody. So we use sample statistics to try to estimate population parameters. For example, we could use the sample mean to try to estimate the true population mean. The sample mean would just be the like, average adjusted gross income for students in our class. Whereas the population mean would be the same thing, the average adjusted gross income but of all the students in the population, all the students at City College. So that only works if our sample, in this case, the set of all the registered students just in our class is representative of the population. It might not be. That becomes a probability question that we will address later in the semester. But we could use the sample mean to estimate the population mean, or we could use the sample median to try to estimate the population median. And we want to compare how these two different statistics, the mean versus the median, how they respond to the presence of some outliers or extreme values in the data. So 
What if Bill Gates joined our class? Would the sample mean stay near the population mean? Would the sample median stay near the population median? The answers to these two questions are really different. Just to find the mean, what you do is you would add up all the incomes of the students in our class, that's the sample, our class, and to divide by the number of students. If we had a representative sample, the average we get for our class would be close to the average we might get for the entire population. But if Bill Gates joins our class, now the average income of students in our class is millions of dollars per year. It will no longer be close to the population mean. So one outlier can make a big difference so that the sample mean might no longer be near the population mean. The median does not have that problem so much. So to find the median income of students in our class, imagine we're in the classroom and maybe we would all line up in order of increasing income. And so the person in the middle of the, the line has the median income. So maybe there's this guy named Bob in the middle of the line and his income is the median income. Now, if Bill Gates joins our class, he goes down to the end of the line because we're pretty sure he's got the biggest income. So he goes down to the, the end of the line. And now Bob's not the guy in the middle anymore. Maybe it shifts over to Sally. Or <coughs> if we, now we have an even number of people, maybe it's halfway between Bob and Sally. <coughs> but it's still right in there near where it was before at a typical income for students in the class and probably also for students throughout City College. So the median is not as vulnerable against, or is not as, as vulnerable to being distorted by a small number of extreme data values in the sample. So what's this robustness? The statistic is robust, which is kind of another word for strong. Um, if it is resistant against distortion by the presence of a few extreme values in the data. By distortion, what I mean is that the statistic would be made to differ from the population parameter that it is intended to estimate. The sample mode is the least robust of our three measures of center. The sample mean is more robust than the mode, and the median is the most robust of, the all, of all three. You should really never use the mode at all with continuous variables, because with a continuous variable, all the x values are going to be just a little bit different from each other. You might occasionally have two that are the same, but rarely if you measure with all, you know, enough, enough decimal points like you can with a continuous variable, there'll be many digits of accuracy. So there are many different possible values that the variable could take. If you have 20 or 30 individuals, they'll all have different X values so, you know, they, the, all the X values might be equally popular. You might not have any one value that comes up more than the others. So you might not even be able to find a mode. But if you do, you know, you get one more person into your sample and the mode will change. So the mode is really only useful with categorical variables or discrete quantitative variables that don't have very many 
different values. Okay. Yeah, so that's all for this topic. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.